Welcome to part eight of my Blender for Complete Beginners tutorial series. If you haven't watched the previous parts, then definitely check out the tutorial playlist with the link in the description. So in this part, I'm gonna be going over UV unwrapping. Now, why you might need to UV unwrap an object is if you are going to add a texture to it. So an image texture, like a rock texture or a dirt texture that you would wanna to add to an object, that is a 2D texture. But an object in Blender is 3D. So somehow you need to tell the 2D image how it's going to be placed on the 3D mesh. And so that is what UV unwrapping is. So basically what you're doing when you're UV unwrapping is you're taking the 3D mesh and you're actually making a 2D version of it and then you're placing it on the 2D texture. So a good way to think about it is to think of your 3D object as made out of paper. And then you're taking a pair of scissors and you're cutting around the mesh and you're cutting the mesh and opening it up. And so once you cut out the mesh and cut it into little pieces and open it up, it's gonna be flat and you could place it on a flat table. Before we continue, if you're enjoying these free tutorials and you'd like to help support me and this channel, then a great way to do that is by joining my Patreon page. And on my Patreon page, you can get access to lots of Blender content like 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials, geometry node, modifier setups, and so much more Blender content. So if you'd like to join my supporters in helping out this channel, then I'll have the link in the description to my Patreon page. So before we start UV unwrapping the snowman, I'm first going to give you a simple demonstration on a cube. So I'll press the A key to select all the objects, and I can press the H key to hide all the objects. I'm now going to press Shift C, and remember Shift C is going to bring that 3D cursor into the very center of the scene. So I can now go to the Add menu or press Shift A, and I'm just going to go here to Mesh, and we will just add a cube. So I'm now going to show you how we can UV unwrap this cube and make it flat, because this cube is 3D, but if I want to put a 2D texture on it, then we're going to need to create a flat version of the model and put it on the texture. So to UV unwrap the object, I like to use this UV editing tab right here, so I'll click over on UV editing. So now I can zoom in here, and you can see that on default, the primitive objects in Blender automatically have a UV map. So this cube has already been cut out, and so it kind of is this cross shape, and so that is because all of these faces have been cut out and laid down flat. If you click right here to go to the face select and then select this face, it's going to show that face right here in the UV editor. So this over here is the UV editor and this over here is the 3D viewport. So if I click on each face, it's going to show a flat representation of that face. And so then you can add textures and you can move the UV and wrap around to place that part of the object on the texture. So for demonstration, I'm going to be adding a new texture here. So let's click on new. You could click on open if you have some sort of like wood texture or dirt texture or any other texture that you want to add. I'm going to click on new here. And then if I click here on the generated type, I'm going to change this to the UV grid, just for an example. And then I can click on OK. So this is a UV grid that Blender has just created. And so now I want to preview this UV grid onto the object so I can demonstrate this better. So what I'm going to do is click over here to go to the shading workspace. And we need to add a material so that we can actually put the texture onto our object. So let's click on new here to add a new material, and I can just call this like UV grid. So we have this principled shader here with this base color, but I want to instead add the texture data, and we're going to put the texture data into the base color so that it is no longer using a color, but it's using the texture. So you can click here on the add menu, or you can use the shortcut key of shift A, and you can just go to the search and you can start to type in image texture, and we'll drop the image texture note here. So then with this image texture, you could open up textures or you could add new textures. What I'm going to do is click on the drop down, and this will show me the textures which are already in the Blender file. And I'm going to choose this untitled, this is going to be the UV grid, and then to actually preview it on the base color, we can take the color and we can put that into the base color. So now, if you're in the material preview, if you're in the solid view, you won't be able to see it. So make sure you're in the material preview. You can now actually see the texture. So let's click back over here to go to the UV editing. So back in the UV editing workspace, I will hold down the Z button and we're going to move our mouse down into the material preview. And I just realized my screencast keys was turned off, so sorry about that. But you can now see my screencast keys right down there in that box. So as I mentioned, these faces are going to be represented right here in the UV editor. And when you select them, you'll be able to see them in the UV editor. 
Now the UV editor works just like the other parts of Blender, so you can click and drag to select different parts. If I press the A key to select everything, you can see I can select different parts of the mesh, so I can actually select the vertices here of the mesh. Or if I scroll my mouse wheel, I can go right over here, and you can see just like in the 3D view how I can select the vertices, edges, or faces, I can also click right here, and I can select the vertices, so the vertices right here, the edges, right here, or the faces right here. And you can press the A key to deselect and select. You can also click and drag to do the box select. And then again, just like the 3D viewport, you can hit R to rotate, you can hit S to scale, and you can hit G to grab. So if I click here to just select this face, it's going to select the face. And so you can see this face now is being placed right here, and so it's a representation of where it's placed on the texture. So I can scale this part down, and now because it's only covering that small part of the texture, you can see now it's just going to be showing that little bit of the texture on that face. Now, if an object isn't UV unwrapped, how do you UV unwrap it? Well, what you do is press the A key to make sure all of the mesh is selected in the 3D view. You can then hit the U button, and you can remember U for UV Unwrap. This will bring up the UV Unwrap settings, and the main one that you'll be using is just this Unwrap. Now when I do that, you can see there is an error here, and that is because there aren't any seams, and so basically Blender doesn't know where to open up the object, because right now this object is completely closed. And so remember earlier how I talked about how you can think of it like a piece of paper, and you're taking scissors and you're cutting out the 3D mesh. So imagine that this is in the real world, and imagine that it is a cube made out of paper. Then what you can do is you can take scissors and you can cut along the edges and you can open up the paper. And so that's a really good example for UV unwrapping. So if I hit U and just try to unwrap it, it's saying that there's no seams, so it doesn't know where to UV unwrap it. So what we can do is we can tell Blender where the seams are going to be. So to do this, we want to go to the vertex select or the edge select, because you can't add seams in the faces, you can only add them on the vertices or the edges, so I'll go here to the vertex select. So first what I want to do is I want to use scissors and I want to cut along here, cut along here, and cut along here so that this top part can open up like a lid. So it's almost like if I just go here to the face select, select this face, it's almost like we're cutting this out and then rotating it up so it's going to be empty. You can see now this almost looks like a box with like a lid and so you're cutting it out and then you're opening it up. I'll just press Control Z though to undo that, but that's kind of a good way to understand it. So again we'll go here to the vertex select and I'm going to select this vertex, and then hold down the shift key and select this vertex, and this vertex, and this vertex. Now, doing it this way, there is a problem, and that is that because I selected all the vertices, this part here is also selected. So instead, I'm going to go to the edge select. So now I can select this edge, hold down the shift key, select this edge, and hold down the shift key and select this edge. So now you can see if I go to wireframe, you can see these edges are selected, but not the back one. So now what I can do is hit the U button again to bring up the UV unwrap settings, but this time I'm gonna choose mark seam. And this is again gonna be cutting out the mesh kinda of like with scissors, cutting out the paper mesh. Now if I press A to deselect everything, you can see where the seams are it has turned red. And this won't show up in the render, this is just a visual representation of where the seams are. If I go back to object mode, you can see it disappears. So it's just a visual representation showing us where the seams are. So now that we have cut that, I can select everything, I can hit the U button, and I can choose Unwrap. So now this is a little bit better. You can see that this part here is opened up. If I go to the face select and select this face, that face is opened up, but you can see there's some weird stretching, and so that isn't right with the UV map. And this is something to note, is that a good UV unwrap won't have very much stretching or none at all. So this is a really bad UV unwrap, because if you were to add some sort of like dirt texture or rock texture, the texture would be really stretched here, and then it would be really squished here, and so that's a sign that the UV unwrap is not very good. And also the size is different, so you can see like right here the texture is really large but over here like the texture is really small so what i want to do is continue to add seams to cut out these edges here so let's click here to go to the edge select and what we could do is we could also add a seam here and add a seam here and then open up this so it would be like one face opening up here and then another face opening up here so let's select this edge and then hold down the shift key and select this edge so i'm now going to hit the u button again we're going to choose mark seam then we'll select everything with the A key, hit the U button again, and we will click on Unwrap. So now it's a little bit better, you can see the faces are pretty opened up, and these two faces here are opened up and they're nice and square. So that is looking a bit better, but there's still some stretching. 
And so we've kind of opened this up and opened this up. So real quick, just to kind of show you what this is doing, you don't have to follow along with this, but what I'm gonna do is just like duplicate this, rotate that over. So this is basically a visual representation of what we've done to the seams. So because we've cut seams here and here, this part can now open up. And if we were to continue to open it up, it would lay flat. So hopefully that kind of gives you a good idea of how UV unwrapping works. So I'll just press Control Z to get rid of that demonstration. So we need to do this again, but this time I want to cut out an edge here and an edge here so that this face here can lay down flat. So what we're going to do is again go to the edge select. You can hit the 2 on the top of your keyboard or click right here. You can now select this edge and then I will shift select this edge. One more time we're going to hit U. We're going to click on mark seam and by the way if you want to clear a seam if you added a seam that you don't want you can just select the seam hit U and then choose clear seam and now it's gone. But I'll hit U, mark seam, then I can select everything and I can hit U again and we're going to do the unwrap. And there we go. So it's now back to that kind of cross shape. For some reason, it's upside down, um, but it is now that cross shape again. And so now if you look around here, you can see there is no stretching. So this is the basics of UV unwrapping. However, there are a few other ways that you can UV unwrap. So if I select everything, I'll hit the U button and I'll choose clear seam. So there's basically a sloppy tool which can be used to do a quick, dirty UV unwrap, and it works really well for kind of square, boxy objects like this. So what I'm going to do is just kind of select some of these vertices and move them around, just so you can see what it's doing. So the UV unwrap is now messed up. So I'm going to hit the U button, and that cool tool that I talked about is called the Smart UV Project. So this is going to try to automatically UV unwrap the object the best that it can. So I'll click on Smart UV Project, and there are a few settings here. We don't really need to change these right now but just click on OK and you can see what it's done is it's added all of these cubes here so it's UV unwrapped it a little bit differently so there's all of the faces kind of next to each other instead of the cross shape but you can see it did a pretty good job so the smart UV project is a good way to automatically UV unwrap it if you just want a quick dirty UV unwrap uh, that works well for kind of these squarish boxy objects it doesn't work well for everything but for some simple things it works pretty well now there are also some different projection types so I could hit U to unwrap and there's other other projection types like a cube, there's also a cylinder, and there's also a sphere. And so if you have these different objects, you can use these, and this might kind of help you to get some of the way there because you're giving Blender a little bit more data with what you're UV unwrapping, so it'll do the best job that it can. Now there's also this project from view. So if I click on project from view, you can see that we actually have like a 2D kind of image of this cube. And if I rotate this and then hit U and then choose project from view, you can see now I can see the cube again. So what the project from view does is it takes your current view and it basically UV and wraps it flat. So you can imagine this object here basically being flattened down. So if I were to like scale it down the Z axis, it would basically flatten it down and then that would become the UV unwrap. I'll just press Ctrl Z to undo that. So if I hit 7 on the numpad for top view and zoom in, I can hit U and then I can choose project from view. And so this time there's just going to be one big square because it's flattened it. And so right here on the edges, because we unwrapped it from the top down, this face is going to be super flat. Here's the face. It's basically been squashed down, but then this face looks good. And then this face looks good. So that is also useful for a lot of things. Now, the most common reason that I probably use the project from view is if I'm trying to UV unwrap a landscape and I want to add like a dirt texture or some kind of ground texture on a landscape, the landscape is generally flat. So so I can go to top view and then UV unwrap it just like we did and it will UV unwrap the landscape from the top down. There are other things you could use it for but using it for landscapes is probably the most thing that I use it for. Alright so now let's actually apply this to our character by UV unwrapping the top hat. So I'll hit tab to go back to object mode then I can hit the X key and let's just delete and then I can click over here to go to the layout. And then to unhide the objects, you can press Alt-H to bring back all the objects. So what I've taught you today on UV unwrapping is just the very basics, but if you'd like to watch a little bit more in-depth video on UV unwrapping, then I have a dedicated video on UV unwrapping for beginners, which goes a little bit more in-depth. So if you'd like to check out that video, I'll have the link to that video in the description. So I'm now going to zoom in here to the snowman here, and I'll select the top hat. And then with the top hat selected, we can go back to UV editing. So I'm going to zoom in here and I will first just press the A key to select everything and I'll hit the U button 
and I can just click on unwrap. And you can see what it's gonna do already. So Blender's actually done a pretty good job on default just by UV unwrapping this. You can see that it's opened up this mesh here and then this circle here and this circle here. And then what it's also done is it's opened up this here. And so it's made it all nice and flat and that is really great. However, sometimes you might need to add a seam here. So I'm just gonna do that just to show you. So in some cases when you're 3D modeling, sometimes it may not do this good of a job. And so you might need to add a seam here to cut it out and then you could open this up flat. So what I'm gonna do is press one to go to to the vertex select and I can hold down the alt key and just select that loop of vertices and then I can hold down the shift and alt key and select that loop of vertices there now you can see that I'm actually adding that seam on the back side. And that is because the seams are going to cut out the mesh. And so sometimes depending on where your texture is, the texture is gonna see that seam. So for example, if you had like a dirt texture and the dirt texture was going around the object, where the seam is, the mesh would be cut out and so it wouldn't connect. And so the dirt texture might end and it may not be perfectly seamless. And so generally when you're adding seams, you wanna add seams to the spots where you can can't really see the mesh. So I now wanna also select this bottom part here. So I'll hold down the Shift and Alt key and select that loop there on the very bottom. So then I can press the U button and we are going to click on Mark Seam. So now we've cut out those edges. I can select everything with the A key. I can hit U and then let's just click on Unwrap. So now you can see it's UV unwrapped it and you can see it's actually stretched it around a little bit and that's because of this part down here. Then it comes out over here. So what I could do to fix this is to zoom in inside the object. And if I zoom in here, you can kind of see it. Let's make this a bit easier by going back to object mode and you can press shift H to hide all the other objects. And then I can hit tab to go back to edit mode. So I can now zoom in here and I want to navigate here to the very bottom and I will hold down the alt key and then select that loop right there. So if I hold down the Z button and go to wireframe, you can see it's going to be that loop there, which is on the edge of the hat. So then I can do the same thing. So I'll hit U and I will mark seam. Then I can double tap the A key to make sure everything is selected. Hit the U button and I will do unwrap again. And now you can see it is more flat. However, you can see that right here, this part is kind of rotating and this part is rotating. And that is because of the scale of the hat. So the hat is bigger here and then it gets smaller. So there is a tiny little bit of warping. So I'm gonna show you a simple way that you could kind of fix this. So what I can do is hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices there in the UV editing. So it works the same way as the 3D viewport, just hold down the Alt key and you can select the loops. So what I can actually do is scale this edge, but then I will scale it on the X axis. So you can either hit X or you can just click and drag with your middle mouse wheel to constrain it to the X axis. Now I wanna make this edge fully flat. So to do that, you can type zero and then enter. So now it's flattening it down by zero, so it's flat. Then I can hold down the Alt key and select that loop of edges there. I can hit S to scale. I can scale it on the X axis and I can type zero and then enter. So that is much better. And then if you wanted to make this smaller, you could hold down the Alt key, select that loop of edges there and I could scale it down and I could just scale that down just like that until it was straight. So now you can see that that part there is very straight. All right, so let's hit tab to go back to object mode. I can go back here to the layout and then I can press Alt H to unhide the objects. Let's press Control S again to save the Blender file. So this is gonna wrap it up for this part of the tutorial series. And so in the next part, we're gonna be adding textures onto the hat. We're actually gonna be adding a little snowflake icon onto the hat. And we're gonna be doing some more UV unwrapping and adding some more textures onto the object. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and also the link will be in the description. And if you're finding these tutorials helpful and you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, then definitely consider checking out my Patreon page, where you can get lots of Blender content as study material or to use in your 3D projects. And I really do appreciate all of your support, it really does make these free tutorials possible. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.